This one. What is the process to diagonalise a 3 by 3 matrix? Well, to form a diagonal matrix equivalent to this one, that means you have to go through a series of operations of pre and post multiplying by elementary row operations and elementary column operations to end up with this diagonal matrix. But it will only be a diagonal matrix if you can find a set of linearly independent vectors to make up the columns of this matrix, those vectors being the eigenvectors. So the first step is going to be get the eigenvalues. So you can get the eigenvectors, checking that they're linearly independent, and then you can go through this and find the diagonal matrix, which should be the matrix consisting of the eigenvalues. So, step one, get the eigenvalues. So, eigenvectors. Well, there's two ways you could do that. You can either say, well, for that matrix A, if that matrix A was to operate in some vector and then just produce some multiple of that vector, then that vector would be an eigenvector and that multiple would be the eigenvalue. And then you could rearrange that AV minus lambda V should equal zero. It's a zero matrix. Taking that out, that's A minus, remember the identity element would be I times, oops, lambda I, times v would be zero. And then, since you're looking for vectors, if the vector can't be zero, then for the solution to that, you're saying that the determinant of this matrix must be zero. And then you can solve it by doing that, subtracting lambda down the main diagonal, and then getting the determinant and equating it to zero. Rather than that, there's that other technique where I can find the, uh, the characteristic polynomial to get the eigenvector values which was this. So you've got lambda minus, and then it just goes through the various determinants of increasing size. That's squared. Where they are, it's like the determinant of the one by one matrices, of the two by two matrices, all based on the main diagonal, and the three by three matrices. That would be the characteristic polynomial that would give the result. Well, the first one, this one here, is going to be the trace of A. This one here, 2 by 2, are going to be the three main diagonal minors. They'd all be positive, remember. So that's going to be A11, we could call it A22, and A33, being the minors of those particular elements. And the last one is going to be simply the determinant of the whole thing. That's a big 3 by 3 determinant. Right, well, what have we got? Trace. Put it over here, then I'll put it in there. So what's the trace of A? That's easy enough. You just add them up, and it comes to zero. What about A11 for all of these particular ones? A11 plus A22 plus A33. What are they going to be? Well, A11 means the minor of this, so that's going to be negative 20, but plus 18. So I've got negative 20 plus 18. The minor of this one, is going to be 4 take away 18. And the minor of the bottom one is going to be negative 5 plus 9. So tidying that lot up, I've got, we can see those bits would go away from each other. There's a negative 16, a negative 16, and a 4 makes it a negative 12. And the last part, the determinant of the whole matrix A, is going to be, well, I'll we'll just use the top row for this. So I've got 1 times its minor, which was that negative 20 plus 18 minus, but that'll be plus the 3 then, times its minor, that's the neg I mean, that's the 12 take away 18, and then plus the 3 times its minor, which is the negative 18 take away, so that's going to be plus the 30. So that's going to be a negative 2, and that's negative 6, so it's minus 18, but there's quite a lot here. That's going to be 12, so that's plus 36. So it's negative 20 plus 36, which is 16. So the characteristic polynomial would be lambda cubed for the eigenvalue, minus the trace. Oh, that means that one's gone. We'll put it in anyway. Minus 0 lambda plus the 2 by 2s. So that will be minus 12, that's a lambda squared lambda, minus the last one, minus 16, equals 0. Right. So, back to this then. So I'll need to factorise this. Well, I'll use a bit of synthetic division at the side there. 1 
0, negative 12, negative 16. And then it looks as if I'm going to have a negative something. One's not going to rattle through. I'll try a negative 2. 1, negative 2, negative 2, 4, negative 8, 16, 0. So there we are. So I've got lambda plus 2 times lambda squared minus 2 lambda minus 8 is 0. So it's going to be lambda plus 2 times lambda lambda. And that's going to be 2 and 4. It'll have to be negative 4 plus the 2 equals 0. So in fact, you've only got the 2. You've got a repeated one. You've got a repeated eigenvalue of negative 2 and a separate one of, or a single one, of lambda equals 4. So that's the first bit. Get the eigenvalues. Well, the eigenvector. Right, now the eigenvector means that a times the eigenvector must be the same as lambda times eigenvector, or a minus lambda i times eigenvector will equal zero. So I need to form this then. a minus lambda times identity. That just simply means subtracting lambda from the main diagonal entries. So for this, I would have one. I'll do the twos first of all. There's a pair of them, unfortunately. I'll have to get two vectors, if I can, from the same number. So what have I got? I've got one, take away negative two is three. Leave them alone. Leave that alone. Negative five plus the two, negative three. Leave that alone. Six, negative six. Take that away, six. I've got that for this part, times v. Well, instead of v, I think I'll call it x, y, z. I know I could go x, one. Y, x2, x3, I like x, y, z. It should equal 0, as in 0, 0, 0. Straight away, applying elementary row operators to that, you can see they're all identical. That would knock down to all the 1s. I'll put that down first. I'll 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, just by dividing each of the rows as appropriate. And then the second row take away the top, the third row take away the top. I mean, there's complete redundancy there. I've only got this. These two rows come to zeros, so I've just got x, y, z for that equals zero, as in zero, zero, zero. So all I've got then is x minus y plus z equals zero. It's the only equation I've got from that whole matrix, because I've got a double redundancy. Z and Y can float freely, but X is tied to whatever you produce for them. So what I'll say was this. Now, I could go through playing with different numbers that add up to zero. But I'll have to get ones that will be linearly independent in the end. But no, put it, put it down this way. Well, Y could be anything. Let Y be A. Z is free to do whatever it like. Let Z equal B. But that means that X will have to equal A minus B which means that this vector is going to be a minus b, a, b, or splitting it into two parts, a times 1, 1, 0, plus b times negative 1, 0, 1, and that would give me, again, there's the A's and the B's that can float, but there's a pair of vectors then that would make up this one. So, I'm going to use this pair then. So I'm going to say I'm going to have V1 is 1, 1, 0, and V2 is, although I could have that as 1, 0, negative 1 if I wanted. Let me go for that. 1, 0, negative 1. That just means taking that as minus the b, just so the tops are nice and neat. Right, there's a pair of them so far. Now, 4. Now, the case of 4. Well, same before. a minus lambda i times the eigenvector should be 0, so I need to work that out. So I've got this vector, I've got this matrix, minus 4 of the main diagonals, so I'll be negative 3, negative 3, 3. 3, and I'm taking 4 off of that, so it's negative 9, 3, 6, negative 6, and I'm taking 4 off of that, so that's 0. That times V, which I think I'll just call X, Y, Z, should give 0, which is 0, 0, 0. Now, and since that's 0, 0, 0, any operations that apply to that won't affect 0, 0, 0. So I'll just concentrate and messing about with this one. So the first thing is obviously I'll just knock them all down. 
three into that row, three into that row, six into that row, negative where appropriate. So one, one, negative one, one, negative three, one, one, negative one, zero. I wish I just wrote V now. Then, getting rid of those particular ones, X, Y, Z. So now it's going to be get that down to a zero. So two take away one, oh, one take away one, zero. Negative three, take away one, negative four. One take away negative two, two. One take away one, zero. One take away one, zero. I'm not talking about. Negative one, take away one, negative two. Zero, take away one, one. You can see that what's going to happen the next one. When we'll, I could do two steps in one. So I've got one, one, negative one. That bottom row is going to go to zeros. If I do double the bottom, take away the second one, I'm going to have zero, 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 just to save a line. And then up back to that one down by dividing by negative two. So negative two into that goes two. Negative two into that goes negative one. Which means I've got these two equations then. X plus Y minus Z must be zero. X plus Y minus Z must be zero. And 2y minus z must be 0 because I've got one redundant row so z is free z can be anything you like and it would still give you a 0 nothing times anything is 0 so z is free so what I'll say is let z be whatever you like let z be a and let's see what we've got well if z is a then that says 2y minus a is 0 so that means y is going to be a divided by 2 y is going to be a half of a. So I've got z is a, y is a half of a. Then what's x going to be? Well, x plus y, which is a half of a, minus a should equal zero. So that's negative a half, bring it over, which means x is going to be a half of a. Then put that together. So that means my vector, which I'll now call vector three, because I've got two already, would be a half a, a half a, a, or taking out a, taking out a half a, that would leave me one, one, two. So this third eigenvector could be anything from that set where you can choose any number for a. So the simplest one would be a is equal to two, so that I've got an example for v3, which would be one, one, two. Right, put those three things, those three vectors back up here and then just check if they are in fact independent of each other. Right, here's all the information. The original matrix, the eigenvectors, eigenvalues, I should have emphasised that was a doubler, and then three eigenvectors, the simplest ones that I could construct from them. Then it's just a quick check, are they actually linearly independent? They'll be linearly independent if I can't make one of them by using some combination of the other two. Or if you like, if some combination of all of them is equal to zero, where they're obviously not zero, would imply that I've just multiplied by a, b and c all being zero. So that'd be the same as saying this then. One, one, zero, one, zero, negative one, 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 two. That's just these three. Put down it as the columns of that matrix times a, b, c should equal zero. So there's a little system to solve just to find what a, b and c are. And hopefully you should find a, b and c come to zero. And that's right because you've got an a and then the b and the c, an a and the b and the c, and then zero a. It's a times that. It's just they've been combined differently. Well, again, since that's equal to zero, I can just concentrate on reducing this part. So one, one, one. So what have we got? Top takeaway, two takeaway, one, zero. Negative one, zero. And then for this one, I'll just have to leave that the way it is just now. And then dropping this one down, A, B, C, this is a little bit messy, so what happens in haste. So 1, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and then 3 take away 2, that's going to be 0, 2 take 1 is 2, C equals 0. And from that I get this, I've got 2 C equals 0, C is 0, negative B is 0, B is 0. A plus zero plus zero is zero, which means A is zero. So they are linearly independent, because to form that homogeneous equation, the only way I could get a zero as an answer would be if A, B and C were all zero. So that's fine. 
And now, finally, I can get my diagonal matrix by pre-multiplying A and post-multiplying by the matrix composed of those, inverse of P, A, P, where P is equal to, just the thing I had down before, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 1, 2. Well, the problem is now I'm going to have to find the inverse of P. So that's going to take a little bit of jiggery-pokery. Well, I'll need its determinant. So what's the determinant of P? could use this column down the side here. So 1 times, that's 0, and that's just going to be 1. Minus 1 times, and that's going to be 2, plus 1, that's 3. So that gives me 1 minus uh, 3 is negative 2. Then, now, to get the inverse, I'm going to have to form the matrix of signed minors, being very careful with the arithmetic now, so that 1 is getting replaced by a nothing take away a negative 1, so that's a positive 1. That 1 is getting replaced by 2, but it's in a negative position, negative 2, and that 1 is getting replaced by a negative 1. This 1 is going to be replaced by 2 plus 1 is 3, but that's in a negative position. That 0 is going to be replaced by 2, and it'll stay at 2, and that 1, which is in a negative position, is going to be replaced by a negative 1, which will put it into a positive 1. This 0 is going to be replaced by 1. The negative 1 is going to be replaced by a 0. That was handy. And the 2 is going to be replaced by a negative 1. Then, to get the inverse, it's just going to be a case of a transpose the matrix formed by the sign minors and divide by the determinant. So it's going to be negative a half times that. So it's going to be negative a half times, flip those round, 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, 2, 1, 1, 0, negative 1. Well, I might as well flip all the signs over. So I'm going to have 1, uh, negative 1, 3, negative 1. 2, negative 2, 0, and 1, negative 1, 1. If that's the inverse, I can feed all that back into here then. Right, so it's just a case of copying it down carefully. So the inverse of P is going to go down first. So copying it down, making sure all the numbers and signs are correct. Get rid of a little bit of space here, and then A, copy A down carefully again, and then copy down P here. So that bit gets copied down clearly, and then that can all go. So starting off then, half of leave that first one alone and we're going to do the multiplication of these two. Right, so what have we got? We've got 1 take away 3 is negative 2, we've got 1 and negative 3 is negative 2, 1 negative 3 and 6 is 4, we've got 3 take away 5 is negative 2, 3 take away 3 is 0, 3 take away 5 and 6 is 4, uh, 6 take away 6 is 0, 6 and nothing and negative 4 is 2, 6 take away 6 and 8 is 8. Now, leave that first one alone. You can use that half up to simplify that second matrix. So it'll be negative 1, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 4. Right. Now, final multiplication. I know what to expect. I'm expecting these eigenvalues. So I've got negative 1, negative 3, 0 is negative 2. I've got 1, 0, negative 1 is 0. And I've got negative 2, 6, and a negative 4 is 0. I've got negative 2, 2 and 0 is 0. I've got negative 2, 0 and 0 is negative 2. A 4, take away 4 and 0 is 0. A negative 1 plus a 1 and 0 is 0, a negative 1, 0, 1 is 0, and a 2 take away 2 and a 4 is 4. There it is, the thing you were expecting all along. The diagonal matrix is just the matrix formed by having the eigenvalues in the main diagonal, where you have P and the inverse of P here, in case you want to do anything further after that by using the diagonal factorisation should just be reversing those and then you can carry out operations in A like finding a power of it and so on just by carrying that out on the diagonal one which is an easy thing to take squares of and cubes of and so on. Right, that's that part.